So we have a history of, of adopting forward thinking election methods. And one of those locally in Seattle uh, is called democracy vouchers. Um, for people not in Seattle, democracy vouchers are going to seem like, like an alien invention. Uh, every voter in Seattle receives from the city four, four $25 vouchers that they can give to any candidate citywide. So you can give your candidate, uh, your favorite candidate $100 or uh, spread it out for candidates to uh, you know, $25 a piece, a piece. And what that does is create a much more representative slate of candidates. It's now feasible for a serious candidate to be entirely supported by the voters and not need to depend on PAC money or outside interests. What that does though, is leave us with a very crowded slate of candidates. Um, you could say we have a fantastic problem. Uh, our city council races now, they have seven, eight, uh, 10 candidates, like 10 serious candidates is not uncommon in our city council races. And what that means, uh, especially because Seattle is a fairly left-leaning city. So, you know, our, our set of opinions in the continuum uh, if you looked at it nationally, would be maybe 30 or 40 percent of the continuum. Um, a a right-leaning candidate uh, would not be elected in Seattle. So we end up with with eight or ten candidates sharing about 30 percent of that election, uh, you know, opinion continuum. And as a result, almost every voter can find some alignment with more than one candidate. And that's why approval of voting stands out to me is you know, if you thought of a traditional a race as four candidates spread across the entire continuum, we're eight or 10 candidates in a pretty narrow, dense space. And most people can find more than one candidate that they support. And approval voting is what will let them cast that ballot.